Hello and welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to complete a trilogy and have a look at Bridging the Minds by Florian Wartman. Um, now, I've done the first two puzzles um, in this series on the channel. I think, I think they've been about six months apart. I want to say the first one I did back in January and then maybe the second one in June. Um, but, uh, but this is the, this is the third and I believe final, um, final version of this. And it's sort of yin yang and minesweeper clues. It's quite, it's a fascinating rule set. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, this is what we're going to be attempting. It's been recommended to us a lot. I think we would have found it anyway, because we, we always keep an eye out for Florian's puzzles. They're always very, very good. And this one indeed has got a whopping high rating on Logic Masters with umpteen wonderful comments. So I'm sure we're in for a treat. And this is what we're going to this is what we're going to try in a moment or two's time. I've got a couple of things to say first. Thank you, firstly, to anybody who joined us on the Chance of Sonar stream last night. We had we had a blast. I'd, <laughs> we got totally confused. But I think uh, we, we did make some progress. We did make some progress. Now, we're not going to be able to stream next Tuesday night. Uh, in the run-up to Christmas, things are getting ever more manic. But we might be able to stream next Thursday. If we can, we'll obviously... Um, We'll obviously announce it on the channel and uh, it'll be at 10 p.m. UK time. So maybe next Thursday uh, could be the day. That's not tomorrow. That's a week on Thursday, by which time we will, of course, have forgotten everything that we learned yesterday. Um, next, YouTube sent me an email um, which included some of the creator highlights. <laughs> um, for, for most of 2023, well, I mean, officially, I think it's from the 1st of January to the end of November. And I thought I might just share some of these with you. I snipped some of the page that they sent they sent me. Um, so this, well, for the 11 months of 2023, we, we had 42.9 million views, which feels like a lot. I mean, it's nearly as many views as an Elon Musk tweet. Um, so, that, I mean, it's just, it's just extraordinary. A thousand, we uploaded a thousand, over a thousand videos. I don't quite know how we've reached that total. I think that must include the Patreon uh, bonus videos because Mark and I have done a video a day since the start of the COVID pandemic, but that would only work out at a bit over 700 videos and even with the extra crossword video that would only be another 50 on top of that so i think i think youtube has counted the patreon bonuses in that we've got 1.4 million likes if you gave us a like thank you very much we really do appreciate it A hundred thousand comments and eighty thousand shares i don't know what a share is really is that where somebody forwards forwards a link or something not sure and our most viewed video from the year was not a video that was released this year. It was, look at this thumbnail, uh, what? It was an Ard van der Vatering, sort of miracle-esque, um, miracle-esque one, which has had well over a million views now. So absolutely, well, Ard is a, you know, an absolutely, absolute genius, genius of a setter. So anyway, I wanted to share that with you and thank you all of you who've, you know, contributed to these figures. And thank you very much for being with us and watching the channel. We do appreciate it so much. I, I cannot tell you. Um, literally, well, probably twice a day, I think back to what I used to do to try and make a crust. And I look at what I do now, where I do what I love, which is to solve puzzles. And I can, I can often barely believe it. I still have nightmares. I still have nightmares about that I'm working in my old job. Um, so, yeah. I no longer have I, I, I no longer have a living nightmare. Um, anyway, that's 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 that. Now the other thing I need to mention is Kickstarter. We're in the last few hours, so um, if you haven't had a chance to have a look at this, I think a lot of you would really enjoy it. It's it's uh, going to be a novella wrapped around lots and lots of fog of war Sudokus by Sandra and Nala. Uh, I've got to I've got to record my solve of the Fistamafel fog of war puzzle, which came in a couple of days ago. I'm going to do that this afternoon um, as a test, and also because um, there's going to be solve videos in the deluxe edition for all the puzzles in in the pack. Um, so I need to do that. Um, and oh yes, and Peter, who who is organising the Kickstarter, asked me to mention that there's a special thing you can get today, um, which is the opportunity to have a custom-made fog of war puzzle 
as part of this this pack um, so Sandra and Nala are going to make so if you said you wanted one with particular features Sandra is going to make that for you um, so check it out I think it's quite dear so um, that, that option it won't be for everybody but Peter did ask me to mention it and um, and anyway what is not dear is 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 the basic thing which is five bucks and um, yeah I c it would be hard to think of a better value Christmas present in terms of a likely minutes of enjoyment um, that one would get from receiving it uh, per dollar spent um, anyway that that's it's really close to finishing I'll try and remember to put a link on the screen other than that just got our normal stuff going on over on Patreon obviously the skunk works pack going great guns and I've got some birthdays to do so let me tell you about those Chris it's your birthday today over there in Montreal Canada and I know this because your partner Kelly wrote to us and apparently the two of you don't miss an episode that is well you've contributed to those view figures so thank you for that and Chris I hope you have a great day today with lots of chocolate cake of course and next to Killian who's turned 22 today and I know this because your friend Tang wrote to us um, I think the channels helped Tang a bit with insomnia um, <laughs> ever been a problem of mine when I speak to people um, but um, the two of you tried to solve a four star difficulty puzzle together recently and you managed to finish it in 10 hours well well done you um, that you know I know how hard some puzzles are and the sense of achievement the more you sort of invest into it if you actually manage to get it out at the end that is a fantastic feeling so you will only improve the more you practice and uh, Killian happy birthday um, and next Ella it's your birthday today and I know this because your work colleague I think it's Tiam uh, wrote to us um, and described you as a major evangelist for variant Sudoku well that you are the sort of person that we love um, Tiam also said you were a wonderful person apart from that so th there's even more to love about you apparently and Ella many happy returns I hope you have a good one apparently um, you would like it if if today's puzzle was very difficult I think this I think this has got four stars out of five for difficulty so it's quite difficult but probably not monstrous um, we'll see <laughs> um, and finally Sandy it's your birthday today and I know this because your daughter Jacqueline wrote to us um, and apparently Jacqueline and uh, her siblings have got you a patreon subscription for your birthday well there's no better present Sandy um, I hope you have a great day today with chocolate cake with an enormous amount of icing and with all that said and done let's have a look at what Florian Walkman has got in store for us with bridging the minds these are the rules I've got the right glasses on I do I've got no excuses I should be able to see um, the rules are normal Sudoku rules apply so we have to put the digits one to nine once each in every row in every column and in every three by three box uh, digits joined by a white dot are consecutive so there is a sprinkling of dominoes that have a white dot there look um, so if this was a two this would have to be a one or a three to be consecutive with that digits joined by a black dot are in a one to two ratio which means one of the digits will be double the other so if this was two that could be a four or a one just make sure that one is double the other and we're good to go not all dots are given so that's just saying it's perfectly possible to have a consecutive pair like this and not have a white dot between them you don't have to have a white dot between consecutive digits it's just we know for sure in these four dominoes the digits are definitely consecutive now this is where it gets more complicated for each line one attached circle contains an odd digit and the other circle contains an even digit the odd digit indicates the number of odd digits along the line not including itself and the even digit indicates the number of even digits along the line not including itself so so let's just think about that in the context of these two so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 so I think that means that these two circles because every digit is either odd and even these two circles must sum to 13 and one of them will contain an even number I don't think we I don't think we can deduce which one um, 
but that will specify how many even digits there are in that panoply. And similarly, the odd number will specify how many odd numbers there are in, in that panoply of cells that we've just, we've just highlighted. But that is not the end of the rules because we also have yin yang going on. Shade some cells such that all shaded cells are orthogonally connected and all unshaded cells are orthogonally connected. No two by two area may be fully shaded or fully unshaded. So this is what is going to allow us to learn some secrets of yin yang shading, which I will tell you when we get solving. So a possible way that this digit could be shaded is like this, because if you study it, um, all of the blue cells are orthogonally connected, which means that they're connected along cells that have, a, have an edge connection. So if we were to suddenly make this square blue, this blue is not orthogonally connected to the rest of the, the blue family because it only touches the blue family at a point. To become orthogonally connected, you'd have to add that one in, for example. But now the greens wouldn't be orthogonally connected to each other. There'd be this string of greens and this separate string of greens, which is against the rules. So we mustn't do that. So this, this is a valid shading. Um, sorry, that is a valid shading. And you can see if you study the grid, no two by two area contains just one color, which is another feature of this rule set that we have to obey. Um, now we still haven't finished with the rules. There's one more paragraph. It says the circles. Now remember at this point, the circles are already doing one job, aren't they? The, the circles are already counting odds and evens in some way. But it says the circles act as minesweeper clues. Circles are always unshaded and their value is the number of shaded cells in the surrounding three by three area, i.e. the up to eight cells that touch the circle, either orthogonally or diagonally. So let's pick that circle. Um, we're told it's unshaded, but the digit in here Let's just make it a four. That's counting how many shaded cells are in those eight cells touching this cell. <laughs> so this is quite complicated today, but it's meant to be a wonderful puzzle. And the first two puzzles were wonderful in this series. So let's see if we've got the return of the king following the two towers and the fellowship of the ring. I hope so. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And I'm going to immediately get cracking by not getting getting cracking. I'm going to I'm going to get cracking um, by sharing some secrets about yin yang shading, which is the shading that we talked about during the introduction. These are normally very important. Um, first thing to realize about this is you can never have um, a checkerboard pattern in the shading here. So if, if we say unshading is light green and shaded is gray, this pattern will not be found in this grid. And the reason is that if you try and connect either the greens together or the grays together using orthogonal connections, it doesn't matter what path you take, how complicated you make that path. Let's make it that path. You can now see this little green cell here can never be in an orthogonal connection with this one because to do so it would have to go through the gray it's it, the gray pond. It's essentially been placed in the middle of a gray pond and that will work however you try and do it. So you can't have a checkerboard and that leads to some interesting stuff that goes on around the edge of the grid which is in the, at the edge of the grid, you can't have an exploded checkerboard. What does that mean? Well, let's have let's have a couple of changes of color in the perimeter like this. That cannot be true. Immediately, we could say that cannot be true. And it's for a similar reason, which is if we try and connect up the greens together, let's make it a simple connection. You can see it's impossible for these grays to now be connected. So it's the same problem, just in a sort of slightly more uh, expanded way. Now, what that means is, let's, let's restart again. What that means is that this perimeter, it can either be entirely one color, that's possible, um, or it can change color, but it can only change color once. So we could have something like this and then that. That's fine, because we haven't, we haven't caused ourselves a problem. But imagine we suddenly interposed a little gray down here, that's the problem because this gray has to connect and in doing so it will isolate green on one side of it and green on the other. So those are my secrets of yin yang.
Um, I hope that they've helped. I hope they help you solve the puzzle if you haven't started yet. Um, now, where do we go? I'm tempted to go actually to the circles on the perimeter first. Because there's a minesweep account, isn't there, going on? I mean, this only sees three cells, so that can only be one, two, or three. That can only be one, two, or three. There's one over here that can only be five um, because it's on the perimeter. So it's counting how many of those cells are shaded. Are the circles unshaded? Did I read that? Hang on. Hang on. Let's go back to the rules. So circles are always unshaded. Right, if I double... Oh, Sven's very clever. Right, so Sven has made it so if I double click a circle, it lights up all the circles. So I can immediately make all of those light green. They're all unshaded by, by dint of rule. And okay, so now... <laughs> now I don't get to put three in the corner today, at least not in these corners. Because if these were threes... That would be saying I've got to put three shaded cells around them. Well, if I do that, I've isolated the green in the corner, and that's too naughty for words. So these, this is a one-two pair in column one. And... What does that mean? Uh... I'm not sure. I, I mean, I'm, I can see one of these has to be a two. And whichever one is a two is going to have to have a shaded... Yeah, that's interesting. Imagine that was a two. Let's just put it in. If that's a two, it's got to have two shaded cells around it. And those two couldn't be there, could they? Because if they were there, we'd have we'd have, we'd have created the very perimeter problem we're trying to avoid. Well, the simple way to see it is the two is isolated. So whichever one of these is a two, definitely has a shaded cell next to it in one of these two squares. Yeah, and actually, if we could work out which one that was, imagine, imagine. Well, let's stick with this being the two. If that's the two and that's shaded then you'd immediately be able to unshade the whole perimeter because you couldn't have a second shaded cell in this sequence anywhere or this sequence anywhere. So we really would be very useful to know which of these was one or two, but... Ah, yeah, okay, so how long is this line? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's not long enough, is it? Because, okay, because the sum of these two circles must be the length of this line. So that square is a seven or an eight. Okay, but it can't be eight. Okay, no, it can't be eight. If this was eight, that would be saying every cell touching this, because it's a minesweeper clue, was shaded. And if again, if we do that, this one is a little pond of green that can never connect to its friends. And we don't want that. So this must be seven. This must be two. This must be one. By the logic we just said, that's now grey. One of these is grey. Right. And whichever one of these is grey, that grey can grow, for sure, in some direction. But it can only grow until it hits another green on the perimeter. So if this was grey, you could have a stretch of grey across the top. If this was grey, you could have a stretch of grey down the side until you hit a green, at which point there could be no more greys on the perimeter for the reasons we talked about when we talked about the secrets. And that means that this stretch of digits, all of these, are all green now. Therefore, that's a grey to avoid a two by two. These two are grey to avoid two by twos. And we've suddenly got a little bit of a start look that and that have to be grazed to avoid a two by two that digit now can't be enormous the maximum that could be is a three um, because I can only fit three gray cells around it now so that's definitely not four or five um, what about that digit then surely yes I can I just write this in because this string of digits is three cells long, 
So the two circles on the end of it must add up to three. So that's a two. And that's telling us that that cell is even. And it's telling us that cell's even because we now know two cells out of these three cells have to be even. But this is a consecutive pair of digits. And there is something you can always know about a consecutive pair of digits, which is that one of those digits will be even and one of those digits will be odd. That is the truth of any consecutive pair. So this is one of each. So the extra even must, must be there. So I suppose actually let's write that in. This black dot now can't have a two on it. So it's either four, it's, well, I'm definitely recording that. It's either four, it's either four, eight or three, six. How do I know that? Well, I've done so many black dot puzzles over the years. It's something I've learned. So there are three digits in Sudoku that can never be on a black dot. And those digits are five, seven and nine. And the way to realize that is to think about what would be double those digits or what would be half those digits. And obviously five, seven and nine, if you halve them, you get you don't get an integer. So that's no good for Sudoku. And if you double them, they become too big to go into the Sudoku. Tens, fourteens and eighteens are too large. So never five, sevens and nines. Um, and then you sort of have the sequence one, two, four, eight would be one sequence. And then the three, six is the other sequence. So once you knock two out, you're only left with two possibilities. Um, Okay, but okay, so we can work out the value of that to within some sort of parameter, can't we? Because this line, one, two, three, four, is five long. So this is the complement of this digit that adds up to five with it. So it's either four, three, or two. We know there's one of each there. And this line as well has got another line emanating from it. Quite a long line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this has to be the complement of that that adds up to nine. So this is six, seven, or eight. Ah, but hang on, hang on. Again, this can't be eight again, can it? Because that's going to put too many greys around it and create this isolating effect. So that's not eight. So this isn't one, which means this can't be four. So this is now a two, three pair. This is lovely. Um, okay. So if that's seven, almost all of these squares have to be shaded. That is what that's telling us, isn't it? But sh shading has no ref relevance at all to the oddness and evenness. Is that right? They're like, it's like two different puzzles, I think. Um, yeah, so although the circles are doing double duty in the sense they're telling you something about shadedness and they're telling you something about oddness and evenness along the line. Those two things don't really overlap. Um, so there are two even digits along this line. And three odd digits, but there must be an even digit here. So there's only one even digit in those three squares. Ah, hang on. That is telling me I've got two shaded digits around around this clue. And I've already put them in. So that, that I can do that. And now I must avoid a two by two there. Ah, OK. Now look at this little grey cell. That needs to connect to its friends. Whoopsie. So the way to allow it to do that is to, is to extend that. That's got to connect to its friends. Oh, right. Let's have a look on this side again. These greys still have to connect with their friends. And there's a little, look, there's a little straight here they've got to go through. Straight, S-T-R-A-I-T. So, so 
So that's forced, and now that must be green to avoid a 2x2 two two here. This must be grey to avoid a 2x2 two two here. Oh, this is lovely. Um, okay. Now, what does that mean? Well, hang on. Now that can't be... That can't be seven anymore, can it? One, two, three, four. No, it can't. Even if I shade everything around this clue, it only reaches a count of six. So that must be six. These must be shaded. That must be three, because we know that they those two added up to nine. So this is two. Uh, that's probably not actually improved our knowledge about this line. We already knew it had two even digits on it. Okay, but we can right, we can we can make that cell green to avoid a two by two. Avoid a checkerboard. That's the first chance we've had to avoid that, so that's green. Avoid a two by two, so that's grey. Avoid oh look, look here. Avoid a two by two, so that's green. Now avoid a checkerboard, so that's green. This two. Ah, yeah, okay, sorry. Oh, yeah, now I've got to switch back. So I, I was thinking of the twos and threes in terms of even digits. I need to think about them in terms of shading. That three is saying we've got to shade those in. Right, oh, this is lovely. I'm going to go straight over here then. Because, because we know there's a second shaded cell that's going around this two, and now it can't be here. Because that's going to, once we connect that cell to this cell, which we have to do orthogonally, that will be isolated. So we have to put the grey there, which means this must be green. Now, this is the stretch, this must be a single stretch of grey around the perimeter. We can't interpose a green, or again, we get the exploded checkerboard effect. That's green to avoid a two by two. But now this column must be entirely green, otherwise, we're going to interpose and make explosion explosive problems. This, oh my goodness, look, this, this hasn't got out at all. So it still needs to go all the way up there to get out. That means that's green to avoid a two by two. Ah, oh, this is beautiful. It's beautiful. It, it's, it's weird as well because you, we've, we've got this far. Oh, hang on, hang on. If I know that's a seven, don't I know what that digit is? Didn't I say there were 13 on this line? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yeah, if that's seven, that must be six. Sorry, I haven't, haven't appreciated that. Now that six is telling us there are six shaded cells around this circle. Well, that's got to be all of those then. That's just forced. This green has to get out. <laughs> um... White dots, what do they tell us? They tell us, no, they tell us about parity, not about shading, I don't think. Uh, oh, no, I was about to say something that would, would have been total and utter nonsense. I won't say, oh, well, hang on, that's now forced. That isn't nonsense, that must be five. It sees five, five shaded cells. And now we can count how long this line is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's a two, because... The line, again, it only contains odd and even numbers. So these two have to add up to the length of the line. Now, this is telling me there's two shaded. I've got one of them. So one of these three is shaded. This one needs a shaded cell to satisfy it, and we haven't got it. Okay. That seven is not completed that's got to be shaded the green has to get out so that's got to be shaded the green can't create a checkerboard so that's got to be green that's got to be gray to avoid a two by two that completes the two clue so that's green this has got to get out and this has got to connect to its friends there you go that's the shading done <laughs> isn't that beautiful that wasn't actually it wasn't too bad it wasn't too bad it but it was it was very good fun um, now, what does that mean? What's this shading useful for? Um, shades themselves. Oh, we've done that. We've done the minesweeper. I've done that. For each line. Right, okay. Th this is weird now. So this shading is actually now, I'm going to say it's all, it's not only otios, it's almost unhelpful. 
Because what we need to focus on now is parity. And I don't think the shading. I'm now worried that if I go, if because my temptation is to delete the shading, just want to delete it because um, I don't want to use it anymore. I don't think it has any value to the solve. But then at the end of the puzzle, I won't have completed the requirements because the final puzzle will have parity shading in it, but it won't have this shading, which is a requirement of the rule. Right, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to... I could use my... No, I, use, I will. I'll use this if I can snip it, can't I? New. I'm going to snip the grid. <laughs> so I've got a record now. Of the, of the shading and now I'm going to try and delete all the shading now there was a way of doing that. I want to say control a yes that's right I've remembered so now if I delete okay so now what we need to do is to focus on parity so we're gonna have we're gonna have a color for even digits which is meant to be blue if I remember rightly because I think blue and orange are the best color block color blind friendly um, hues that we have in our palette so those are all even digits so they're blue these are all odd digits so these are all orange O for, o for orange now what does this mean and the right so now we've got to get out of our head that these twos are saying anything about minesweeper they are totally saying things about Are totally saying things about the lines that they are on. That's how we knew this was even back in the day. There are four twos by Sudoku. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to say this. There are four twos looking at this box. So that's a two, which is even. So we can might as well put it in. Now sixes. We don't have many sixes, but we do have a couple. Um, ah, okay. Now let's look at this stretch of real estate. Now this stretch of real estate is meant to have two even digits on it, but it's already got one even digit on it. And that's a lot of row one to not... Yeah, I see. Right, so if we think about a whole row of a Sudoku, how many even digits are there? Well, there's a two, there's a four, there's a six and an eight. So there are four even digits. So in this row, I've already put one in here, which doesn't contribute to the count of this line because it's a circle. I could, well, I can only have one more even digit in all of those cells. Otherwise I break the total for this line overall. So the other two even digits in this row must be in those squares. Now that gives me an even digit on... Oh, this is beautiful. Right, I've remembered. Because when we looked at this, we noted there was going to be an even digit on this, um, in this, 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 this domino thing, this consecutive pair. So if we look at this line now, there's definitely an even digit here. There is definitely an even digit here. So these two digits must be odd. Now, there's no checkerboard now. There's no checkerboard, so we can't do anything with that. Right, but it's also fair to say, isn't it, if we come back to this line, that if we know that the second even digit on this line is in this string of digits, these two squares must be odd. We can't have any more even digits. Now I've got all the odd digits in row two. What a beautiful, beautiful idea this is. Now I've got all my even digits in box three. So I've got to completely color those in. Right, and now I've got an odd digit on a dot. So that's got to be even. Oh, I tell you what, it's very hard to get my brain out of wanting to connect these all up orthogonally, which is totally not what the puzzle is about now. There's an awful lot of odd, odd digits in here. Um, now, what about... We've got 13. Yeah, okay. Um, 
I don't know if this will work, but I'm going to have a. I'm just going to have a quick look at box four. Um, so this box four, because I know you can see there's a line that takes every cell in this box. So that line will automatically have on it four even digits in this box, the two, four, six, eight, and five odd digits, the one, three, five, seven, nine. Now this this line here also has that digit on it which is even so now we're now we're to equal number aren't we yeah this, this is going to get oh this is oh this is absolutely superb look what this is going to do right so these three digits now because once we include this and this together we're at five evens and five odds for this line now it's meant to have seven odds so that means two of these are odd and one of them is even but look at the row now if two of these are odd and there are three more odds in the row, that's all five odds for the row, which means that is even, which means I've done box one. So everything else is odd. This is now even because we must have one even in that string we said. Um, whoa, what's that doing then? There must be at least one even on any any black dot because obviously one of the digits is double the other so if one of the digits is x the other one can be expressed as 2x <laughs> 2x is always even so there's at least one even there if that was double even we'd have done column one um hmm can't see anything now that's even by, by dint of the line down here. Well, this is one of each. Oh, bobbins, come on, Simon. <laughs> what else am I meant to do? Uh, that's one of each. Any white dot is one of each. So maybe this line then? We've got to put six evens on this line. Is that under any pressure? And three odds. So we've already got one odd. We're going to have a second odd there. I don't think we know what that is, do we? Um... Hmm, not sure. Two in this box is nearly restricted. Two down here. There's no two on this black dot. Hmm, no, I'm getting stuck now. Bobbins. Um, what about... <laughs> no, I've got nothing. <laughs> I'm trying to see what it is, but I'm just not seeing not seeing anything clever at all now. Have I got it's possible I'll have a row or column or something. Ah that's interesting. Right, so I thought about this black dot from the perspective of it must have an even digit on it. What about this black dot? That can't have two evens on it. So this black dot is either a 1-2 pair or it's a 3-6 pair. It That's not 2. No, that's not 2 either. There's a 2 looking at it. How can I do that? How do I look at that? See that, well, see this 2 and use it, but don't see that 2 in the column. That's weird. Okay, so this is actually a 3-6 pair now. Right. But the, the crucial thing about this, of course, is that this column now has, has its panoply, its, its core eight on even digits. There are four even digits in those five squares because there must be a six here. In fact, in fact, where does six go? In column nine, then. It's got to go at the top by Sudoku. Which means there's a six in one of these two squares. But that means all of these squares are also odd. Now, does that do anything? There's another odd in this domino. <sighs> ah, that can't be. Right, that being 3-6 means this can't be 3-6, because if it was, it would wipe this one off the board. So that's now an even domino. Ah, look at that. Column 4. 
we've now got four even digits in it so we can shade the rest of this column this is so well put together isn't it every deduction it flows really smoothly um, okay now if I knew that was even I would have all the evens in this row which would be wonderful I can only put oh right sorry Let, let's go back to this box how many even digits can I put in all of those purple squares the answer is a maximum of two because I've already got two evens in the box so I can put two evens in there but I still need to get up to six evens on the line so the rest of the line must all be even right now that oh no uh, that's amazing oh well that's even okay so that's that's a six that's a three three is definitely odd uh, is that doing something one two three four five and one of these is even but i don't know which one this line here now oh yeah okay this is double even isn't it that's beautiful as well it's um so the only odd digits in sudoku that we can put on a black dot we looked at this earlier are the digit one well that can't go on this black dot and the digit three now you may say that could be a three well that's true but but that would force this to be a six which it can't be so in fact it's not possible to put an odd digit in on this which makes it double even and that completes all the evens for this box it completes all the even well it does loads of things all of the evens for this column so those are both odd now i think that means that has to be even but we'll come back and check that in a minute that those are both odd one odd on here so that's even um is there any more anything else easy there that we can see do we know what this black dot is then it's not got one on it so it has got four on it because it's either two four which would have to be in this order or it's four eight ah ah that's a problem isn't it it's four eight in either order so but if that's true that would get that would that would make this a six which feels like it's worth knowing yeah that's just true isn't it yeah that's just a truism related to box eight that is a six so that means six is in one of these two squares in box five six is in oh ooh, that's interesting so six is in the same two columns of the grid in um boxes one and seven so one way of thinking about the fact there's a six here and a six in one of these two is to say where is the six now in column three and we don't know but it's definitely in one of those two squares it nearly can't be there look if that's a six it couldn't have a five next to it so it would have that if that's a six it has to have a seven next to it I, and i looked at that seven and for some reason I, I i thought it might be looking in there but it's it's not it's not doing any knight's move jiggery pokery so we can't use that um all right so what do we do now i don't know yet but in a moment or two we might know oh how do we oh yeah look at this column there's a six in here that's an even digit so one two one two three and the six is four even digits so that's odd which means that must be even so this is a four eight pair in the top row uh, i was wondering if the four eight was going to uh, intersect down here but it doesn't want to ah uh, that one might um bother <laughs> what does that mean uh i don't know it might be that we're meant to do i've got loads of fours and eights in the grid it might be that we're meant to do a bit of sudoku at some stage soon rather than keep trying to plug away with the coloring We've got two. 
Okay, I can get that one. I can I can get the parity of this one, can't I? Sorry, that's been obvious for ages probably. Um, so this this line here, two of these digits have to be even because this line needs two even digits on it and it's not got any yet. So two of those are even. That's going to complete all of the evens for this box. So that is, oh, that's huge. That's odd. And it's not six. So that's six. So that's six. Oh, right. So that is seven then. Ah, no. Seven. Not red. <laughs> seven. Um, because it's consecutive. Obviously, six is an even digit. So this is one of each. Six is even. Let's put that in. Um... So this this is four or eight again. And no, I was thinking, can I get the two position somehow in this box? But I'm not sure I can. Um, actually, this is getting a bit weird now. Because this line is just it's sort of a bit automatic how it gets I'm not sure it's going to be very useful in the sense that the, it covers the whole box I mean the black dot might be useful the black dot can't ah yeah there you go that's it the black dot can't be three six it also can't be one two because of the column one so it can't have an odd digit on it so we know it's double even and if it's double even And we know it's not one, two. It must have a four on it. <laughs> Is that of any use? Um, well, it means there's a, there's a four in one of those two squares. That's true. There's got to be an even digit on this white dot. And it's not four and it's not six. So it's either two, which would have to go there. And then this would be one, actually. It couldn't be three. Or it's eight now if it's eight it could go with seven or nine. Oh, that's that's a disastrous pencil mark sorry that was not that was not the way where we were meant to look next i don't think um okay so we've nearly is there a reason Golly, I don't know, actually. I'm not sure where I'm meant to look now. Two in this box is in one of three places. If it was here, this would be a four, two, four pair. Uh, oh, that's four or eight as well. I'm tempted to colour the fours and the eights just to see if if we can find a cell, a blue cell that sees both colours of four and eight, then we would know that had to be a two or a six. Um, I might do that actually. Let's just have a. Qu I haven't got anything better to do. I'm just trying to think about where to start it. I'll start it there because I can see that that one now. Is the same as that one, which is the same as that one. So yellow. So this is purple now because it can't be yellow. This one is purple. That one's yellow. Now, does that do anything? What's that? That's that would be a nice thing to know, wouldn't it? That's purple, actually. That is purple, um, because. Where does purple go in this box? It's knocked out of these squares. So that's purple. So purple. Can we improve upon this at all? I'm not sure we can. Yellow is in one of those. No, I don't think it's going to quite work for us, I'm afraid. Must be maybe it's Sudoku in some some way I haven't appreciated. Um, where would that be? This is a consecutive pair that must have an even digit in it. That even digit is either two or eight. Now, is there any restriction on either of those? Don't think so. Not sure. 
there's a yellow digit up here. There's a yellow digit here, but I don't know where I don't know where yellow is over there. Golly, this is this is suddenly um it's it's rearing, isn't it? It's rearing up and being very recalcitrant. Um naughty puzzle. Naughty puzzle. What's so if if purple was four, that would be purple. If yellow was four, then we'd all we'd know is that that would be yellow. Oh, we know that's yellow, I suppose. I hadn't seen that. Ah, oh, nearly. So we can nearly get yellow up here. It would even be useful if we knew this was purple, though, wouldn't it? That would that'd be another small win for the good guys. Have we not used... Hmm... I don't know. I don't even know where to look here. One is in one of those squares by Sudoku, so one's in one of these squares by Sudoku. Oh, that's it. Right. Wow. Okay. It wasn't. It wasn't the even digits after all. It was the odd digits. Why do I say that? Well, look. Where's one in box one? And the answer is I haven't got a Scooby Doo. It's in one of those cells. But that means that one in this column is in one of these squares and that means this is not a one two pair so it has got eight on it definitely now eight is that helpful well only in the sense i suppose that that means this is now a two four pair isn't it because it definitely doesn't involve eight so eight are If that's right, now what's that digit then? That's got to be 1. If this is a 2, this can't be a 3. And if this is a 4, this can't be a 3. So it's, that's 1 or 5. And 8 in this row now is in one of these two cells. Which is the final even digit, isn't it, for this, this, this box. So all of these turn odd. Now that might do something, he says desperately. Um, this domino is now a 2-4 domino. That's no good though for in terms of colouring, so we can't colour that yet. Um, and 4. Ah, uh, that doesn't work. I'll oh, bother, 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 bother. Oh, two. That's a two. Sorry. Two, four go in there. That's now eight. Ah, oh, that's done it. Eight, 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 four, 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 four. Okay, that's a relief. That is a relief. Sudoku came to my rescue. That's got to be... Oh, that's got to be eight now by Sudoku. So that's got to be six. So I don't actually think we did need the colouring. I don't think I used it. I, maybe I did, or maybe it allowed me to fill that flurry of digits in more quickly, but I don't think it did a, a profound amount. So that's orange. Um, so what do we now know? That's a four by Sudoku. And in this column, we've not put in six. Oh, we can just write the six in. It's got to go there. So that's even. We get a whole run look of even digits in row eight. We've got all our even digits in this column. And this is one of each. Ah, I've got all my odd digits in this column. So those those are both even. So these are both odd. Oh, st still haven't done that. But we have nearly coloured it now. So this is a 2-8 pair. So maybe actually this digit. If that's 2, that has to be 3. And if it's 8, oh, it can be either 7 or 9. Look, bother. What about... What about, that's not eight, four in the middle box is exactly there. So that does, that does another 
boxes and that does row so that's now got to be odd which means that's the eight and that's the final even cell of the grid good grief it's it's very interesting this because it's it's several different puzzles in one we had to do mostly yin yang at the start but then it was a it felt like it was a bit of sudoku and now it seems to be odd even shading a parity puzzle and now i'm guessing it's going to go back to being sudoku again one three and nine where is oh nearly as a one three nine triple in row four with that not allowed to be three oh, these are all one three and nine that one can't be one ah no what i was about to say was Oh, total and utter gibberish so i will i will i will refrain from saying it um okay so maybe hmm, i don't know actually oh three that's where we go now look that's got to be a three it doesn't fix that but that does fix three in box five So I get a one nine pair. Right, so where's seven in the middle row? It's got to go here. Oh, that's huge. That is huge. Because now that's nine, that's one, that's five. Come on now. That's nine by Sudoku. We've got a one three seven triple here. I'm just gonna write it in and then and then do this slowly so we can fill in some things. Um Okay. Is that good? Yeah. Where is three in this box now? It has to go there, only there. Where is three in this box? Seems to have two positions. That may be wrong. Um, maybe we pencil mark this row. One, five, and nine. Let's see if we can reduce anything. That can't be five. I suppose. It does give me a one, nine pair in column five. Okay, so we must need to place threes and sevens. That can't be a one three and seven apparently are not resolvable at the bottom of the grid so we must have one five and nine in the remaining odd cells and that doesn't help me one jot bother um okay let's try this column then three five and seven i need i need to know more about fives i feel like How many fives have I got? Very few. Very few. Or maybe threes? Let's try threes instead. Well, that does remove three from there, which I hadn't seen. This, uh, this white dot, or this, that, that white dot's done. Are there any other white dots that I've not, I've not done this white dot? So maybe there's a way we can resolve if this is, mm, I don't think so. I don't, it doesn't feel like this gets resolved by this black dot. It feels like this gets resolved some other way, maybe by this becoming restricted. If the, for example, if that can't be a three, that resolves indirectly this. Why can't this be a three? That would make that a three and that a three and that a one. Ah, what about trying to fill in the whole of column eight? That would be a sensible thing to do. Ah, no, that's not that's not the right digit. But that gives me a five in the corner, which is a little bit of a win. Okay, so I haven't put ones and sevens into this column. Has that done it? So this is also a one or a seven. So that's not, oh, that, that does do something. One and seven are looking at that square. That becomes a five. Oh, nearly anyway. Oh, so that becomes a nine. So nine is now in one of these two squares in box two, which means that's not a nine. That's a one five pair. So this is a seven. So that's a seven and that's a one. And now that's a nine by Sudoku. And now there's a nine in the, that joins its friend the three in this box look and we must have what's that one and five oh which we can do now at the top so five and one giving me a three here three seven one seven on the dot so that's eight which does that as a two that as a two 
that's two, that's four, that's four, that's eight, and we've done the even digits, I think. Um, that's a seven by Sudoku. And okay, so in this column, this is now one or five. That's a four, and that's going to do the ones and fives look. So that's five, that's one, that's one, that's nine, that's five, that's nine, that's one, that's one, that's five, that's seven, that's three, and that's something, nine, and that's nine, and that's three. That might be, that might be the puzzle correct. I'm not sure, let's see. Oh no, no, I've messed it up. What did I do down here then? Was that just a slip of the pen? That's, no, it's not. No, it's not a slip of the pen. I was suddenly thinking I could make this a two and it will all work, but I can't. I've got two fours in this row. Whoa. Oh dear, dear, dear. Oh, hang on. Hang on, what, what happened there when I... Oh, okay. No, it is. A, I think it is a slip of the pen. I seem to have filled in a four into a place where I tried to write a five. So if I change this to a five... Oh, <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> it's such an awful feeling when you're on camera and, and that happens and you think, but, but I did it logically, didn't I? It felt logical. So how, how can that be true? And yet, and yet, oh, it's just a brilliant puzzle. I mean, it's about six puzzles in one. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a worthy, a worthy final. Oh, hang on. I've just remembered. I haven't, uh, this is wrong, isn't it? Oh, you're all about to tell me. This is all wrong. I know it's wrong. Um, hang on. It's wrong because the shading's incorrect. I have to go back to my picture, don't I? <laughs> In order to, to create the correct shading. Um, so let me try and do that for you. So it was something like this, maybe that. This whole column was all, oh, an awful lot, wasn't it? It was all the way round to there. And then I think that was all shaded across the top. So if I've got all this right, those are going to be green. This is going to be the most terrible way of doing it, but I can't think of a better way. Right, so if all of that is true, I can sort of do, I can sort of paint something in here, can't we, in gray. Now, where does that cross across to? That crosses, uh, it goes like that, and then up here, can't remember how far it goes up. Oh, no, 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 I'm moving the puzzle out of the... Th no, I don't want to do that. What a palaver. Um, okay, so it now seems to be that, that, and that. And I'm going to claim... Let's shade all of those in green. That that could be... Let me just look at my... Look at my snip. Yeah. That looks that looks that looks the same shading as I had before. So I think that's genuinely. Let's check. I didn't change any digits. That's genuinely the correct solution. I have done the correct shading with the correct digits. I think. Um, loved it. Absolutely brilliant, Florian. As always. Um, as I say, a great third part of a very enjoyable trilogy. Let me know how you got on and if you had a go. Um, and uh, I enjoy the comments that you leave, especially when they're kind. And the vast majority of the 100,000 comments that have been left on Cracking the Cryptic videos over the last 11 months and a half have been kind. This is one of the most, um, I think, wholesome communities on the internet. And um, Mark and I, I can't tell you how pleased we are about that. Thanks for watching. We'll be back again later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.